what's up everybody? Welcome back to another vlog here in Morocco. If you are new to our channel, we're Peter and Ian, travel vloggers from New Zealand. We've made it all the way back here to Marrakesh, but we're only staying here for a little bit. We're actually waiting for our bus over to Isawera. Yeah, we can't wait to go. It's supposed to be a really pretty coastal town and it's going to be about a three hour or so drive away from Marrakesh. <laughs> so nice seeing that blue right behind us and it actually took four hours to get here but that's because we had a couple of stopovers along the way so the first one was to a cafe and toilet stop which was only about 20 minutes and then we went to see some argan trees and yeah. then an argan oil cooperative and then we came over to here. Actually no, we have one more stop, a panoramic view, and then it was here. <laughs> so we've got free time now to roam around because this isn't a guided tour or anything that we joined. It's literally just to get the transport over here and then transport back to Marrakesh. And it was, I think, 30, 30 New Zealand dollars per person. 30 NZD per person. So right now we're just going to have a quick little wonder, but I think we might get some food first since it's uh, lunchtime and I believe we are close to a couple of stores down that way. So should we go check it out? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. This is a pretty interesting spot, isn't it, bud? Sure is. We were walking around looking for some food and then we stumbled into this part, which is quite an iconic spot, I reckon, of Esawira. It's where all the pretty blue fishing boats are. And Esawira is known for being the wind city of Africa. It's a very windy place where people come to do surfing, windsurfing, kite surfing. But it's also quite famous because of these boats here, as well as being a film location for the Game of Thrones. This area though, incredibly pungent, <laughs> so it's a very fishy smell. But there's a lot of interesting stuff in this marketplace and hopefully we'll come across some food soon. But yeah, in the meantime, pretty blue boats. This nice fisherman is giving us a tour of the boats. Thank you so much. <laughs> Saeed, thanks Saeed. This engine. Two engine for small boats. Yen's getting taken away on a boat here. Hey bud. <laughs> oh no, bring her back. <laughs> completely unexpected we ran into Saeed here and he just brought us to go look at all the boats and like walk on them and then you took a whole bunch of amazing photos for us so thank you again Saeed <laughs> As nice as Saeed was, he did charge us a little tip for helping us take the photos and stuff, which was all good. That was 50 dirhams. We negotiated it down from 100 dirhams. <laughs> for like yeah. about a five minute speed tour. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really interesting and he took some great photos of us. Yes. And uh, we're just out here in the marketplace now. I saw some kinna or otherwise known as sea urchins and that's me. We're also going to find some fresh fish at the barbecue just over there. Yeah. And maybe some sugar cane as well, eh bud? Yes. So the little sugar cane station right that over here. That sounds good. Hi. Lots Hi. of wonderful. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, lots of wonderful food out here. I'm very excited to get into that kidna though. Come on. How exciting is this to find some fresh kinna right in this market here? Yes. They were only five dirhams per kinna, which is pretty reasonable compared to um, rates back home in New Zealand. But here we go. I can't wait to try this out. <laughs> They're definitely a different color. So usually in New Zealand, the kinna, it comes out like almost like an egg yolky yellow. Yellowish, yeah. yeah. This is quite orange here. This is quite orange, yeah. So let's give that a try. Oh, <laughs> that is that is quite salty. And oh, it's got quite an interesting flavor to it, actually. I, I really can't describe it. It's a little bit sweet and it's 
just really interesting. It's a little bit sweet and it has this uh, almost like unnatural flavor to it. But then you, once it all clears out, it tastes very like the sea. So it's very tasty. I do enjoy it. Quite unusual though. So quite different to New Zealand ones then. Yeah, huh? definitely. Because a New Zealand canut generally just tastes like you're eating like maybe an egg from the sea. So it's quite salty <laughs> and eggy tasting. But this... is different. <laughs> mm, interesting. So we're just waiting for my fish to get grilled up now. Yeah, and a couple of sardines. Oh, I also got the sugar cane. Oh, yes. Oh. Yum. Sugar cane's nice yeah. and tasty. And uh, they add some lime here as well, which gives that a little bit of zest. Mm. So if you're looking for this spot too, if you come right down to kind of like the end of the port where you can see the cannons facing out and a bunch of the blue boats just sitting inside the water, then you'll find this spot here. And my food's arrived now. I've got a white fish and two sardines that Peter's ordered me and they grilled it over the charcoal barbecue. It was a hundred durham, I think. Total, yeah, right? that's right. Let's have a try. Oh, look at that. Ah. So yeah, I think you can go to a bunch of restaurants and all that sort of thing, or you can come here for a much more, um, how do you say, local experience <laughs> right in the fish market. <laughs> mm. Wow. It is really fresh. Um, I don't know if they've seasoned it yet or anything, but it's salty too, which I love having salty, <laughs> salty food, so it's nice. Just cut a little bit of it. That one's like even saltier. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of tiny bones, so you gotta be careful. But yeah, nice experience to be able to have this right here in the middle of the fish market. You get to pick what it is that you wanna eat and have it all grilled up for you. Let's finish this off and then we'll go explore around. Sounds like a great plan. here compared to Marrakesh. Anywhere that we've been in fact. Yeah I guess so and I think that's mainly largely due to the part that we're right next to the Atlantic Ocean over there and that you can also see all these ramparts which we will go find our way and get closer to because that's where um, the Game of Thrones film location was. That was the set for Astapor or Slaver's Bay. But yeah, from here you've got a great view. It is quite windy so having something a little warmer is probably a good idea. But the sun is out so that's very nice and there are so many seagulls. <laughs> you can hear some music playing over there too. What a vibe. Yeah. wandering through the Medina and going and seeing lots of stores we've somehow managed to stumble our way here which looks like the entrance to the rampart so I'm really looking forward to seeing this because in the Game of Thrones <laughs> at least it looked really amazing and it'll be interesting to see how much of it looks you know the same or how much has been CGI to it You, eh? Yeah, you got fantastic views from all around this Atlantic Ocean from this watchtower here on the rampart. And this rampart was first constructed in the 18th century. And as you can see, it's still in incredibly good condition. Yes. It was originally constructed to protect the port 
and actually we were doing a bit of reading and we found out that season three Game of Thrones for you Game of Thrones lovers, yes. Daenerys Targaryen was actually standing right there I On think platform, it was. platform, yeah. And she was inspecting the uh, Unsullied army. Yeah, and learning all about them here. And somehow we managed to get this whole place pretty much to ourselves. Yeah. We noticed a lot of people um, like to climb up on the cannons and take a photo there too. <laughs> Yeah, and you can get great views when you climb over the wall just a little bit too. Yeah, but let's go check out that like long stretch of cannons. Let's do it! <laughs> What a cool view, eh? Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, and I think minus maybe the restaurants and that sort of thing, it doesn't look like they changed all that much for Game of Thrones. Yeah, it does have a very old worldly feel to it, this it area. It does, it does. If you're planning your trip to Esawera as well, we actually first booked through Airbnb and it was meant to be a small group experience. Yeah, it was highly rated too. Yeah, it was highly rated, but unfortunately at like about 9 p.m. the night before we were meant to go, they messaged me and they were like, oh, sorry, we don't have enough people. We're gonna have to either cancel on you or if you want, you can go another day. Or and, pay us more. Yeah, or pay us more. We didn't like any of the options and we were kind of a bit disappointed with that. So instead we actually booked through Get Your Guide and it was actually cheaper as well. So the one that was on Airbnb was about 49 New Zealand dollars and we went through Get Your Guide and it was 30 New Zealand dollars per person. Yeah. So saved a little bit of money, pretty much did the exact same experience as well. I think so. Yeah, yeah. and so it was all good in the end. Luckily, Get Your Guide came through yes. big time. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of our stuff from there, so it's yeah. been pretty good. It's been very handy. and. Now that we're at the end of the rampart, you can get a great view of this island with some fortifications on it and it looks really cool. Yeah, and I love this spot that we're at too because we managed to get all the cannons that way, ocean out Water that way. Out that way, <laughs> yeah. It's a nice spot. Mm. myself because I've been enjoying these little Moroccan pastry snacks. Look at this one, covered in icing sugar. Looks delicious. <laughs> it does. Let's have a try. Mm. That's good. <laughs> it's chewy and um, very nutty as well. And then you have all that sugar hit from the icing sugar. Oh, it's yum. It's like a soft chewiness. Which is yeah, good. we've been having them a lot, like we everywhere have. we go. Especially with the mint teas and all that too. And with the riyads and stuff. Yum. beach it's really wide you've got the golden sand and it's actually not quite as windy as I was anticipating the other part that we're at was a little windier but I was picturing like Ait Ben Hadoub uh, windy yeah <laughs> it's not like that at all yeah if you saw that vlog of ours we were just getting blown away up there it's not quite like that here so maybe we just have a very nice calmer day or something <laughs> Yeah, another thing that they seem to offer a lot of here because we've been approached by a couple of people is quad biking and camel rides. So I guess they would do that at some stretch of the speech here. So I think we're going to wrap things up here from Esawira, everyone. Yeah, we get four hours to enjoy this town at our own pace, which I think is just the right amount. Yeah, we've got maybe about 15 minutes or so before we have to head back down the beach back to our meeting point and go back to Marrakesh. Yeah, this place is a lot more calm and peaceful than it is in big cities like Marrakesh and Casablanca, so yeah. it is definitely worth a visit. Yes, if you can afford the little day trip out, it's definitely nice here. And if you guys enjoyed this vlog, we hope you will give us those likes, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave us a comment. Have you been here? Would you like to come here? All that sort of thing really helps our channel. And if you can, please do share our video because that really helps too. We will catch you guys On next the next time. one. See you everybody. Yeah. <laughs>